so we will have the um, you'll have the keyboard stuff with it uh, even though you don't see it here but you will see it in the actual video okay um, and if you guys have questions ask them um, always uh, you might want to type them in too but let's see where we get here okay uh, so you ideally have the software downloaded uh, it's working I hope and if not we can help you with that you understand there's an interface there and ideally you understand that when I hold down the alt key I can rotate around and alt and shift will move me around um, you may remember I did this where I clicked on this and then I drew some stuff out here and started making shapes like that right um, very rapidly they learned that's really unpleasant um, this is true before um, before you had these programs like this uh, all of this was written in code and actually a good example of this is um, the first uh, what the, hell? the first Tron movie um, they did not have interfaces they actually wrote they wrote the XYZ location of each point in code they wrote where the lines would be and the edges and they wrote all that stuff and it would take them days and then they would um, they would have it render but they had to photograph it off a screen with a moving picture camera it might take a minute or two a frame just to photograph it then they had to send the film to be processed and they had to get the film back and then they had to look at it and if it was wrong you had to go back to the code and that was really a lot of work so what they realized very rapidly is that there were certain shapes they used over and over again spheres cubes cones which not coincidentally are what those things look like up there and they realized rather than writing the code for every single point of a sphere what I could do instead is say here's a formula for sphere now put one there and put one there and put one there and put one there this is the first type of modeling that became common it's known as primitive modeling these are known as primitive shapes uh, like I told you I'm gonna just do new scenes here because I don't want to get lost I'm gonna go over here just close that don't save and close that don't save I don't want to save at all and I'm gonna start my interface here I'm gonna show you another keyboard equivalent right away the a key the a key frames everything up um, so you'll see I'm looking right at the dead center of my screen now um, in the lower left hand corner it's showing me the axes and they are color coded Y is green Z is blue and X is red and they'll always stay that way okay so I want to use primitives instead of actually putting things in point by point uh, I'm gonna pick a primitive first and what this is gonna do is it's gonna open a program uh, I'm gonna pick the donut often known as the Taurus I'm gonna click it and when I do it down here this is every single thing that relates to a torus. Anything about a torus I can change exists here. Now, entering the numbers is kind of a nuisance, so I can go out here and click with my left mouse, and I can start to pull, I'm still holding down the left mouse. It gives me part of the shape. I'm gonna hold down that Alt key and rotate around it. And then these transform manipulators, which are these boxes, let me flesh that out. And now while this is live, I can change all this. And note down here how the numbers are changing at the same time I told you to work in one-to-one -one scale I also told you to use metric here's the thing about that we know metric systems based on 10 right um, and our system is based on God knows what 12 30 60 72 okay here's the problem with that um, computers are very powerful they have floating points meaning you know below the uh, uh, integer you could have you know point da 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 da, da but those only go so far uh, let's say it went to 10 floating point um, do they call them decimals 10 floating point numbers that would be an incredibly small thing but if it gets beyond it the computer will freak out so when you start taking a foot and then divide that into an inch and then dividing an inch into thousands you very rapidly start getting to weird places in floating point where things don't line up Whereas, if you convert everything to metric, things run better. So, like, I know I'm about six foot one, and that's a little bit under two meters tall. I happen to know that. could go to Google and look that up if I wanted to. If I want this donut to be two meters wide, I'm going to look down here, and uh, let's see the radius, the radius of the X. Uh, well, that's about that, because if I want it to be exactly that, I could put in... Uh, 1m and when I hit enter that's now one meter wide 
If I hit the A key, it will frame that back up again. And uh, we'll do it on all axes. I'm going to go here and I'll make that 1M. And we'll make it on the Z 1M too. So I can enter those values easily. I also can slide these values. Um, let's say I want to position this at zero. If I grab these here, I'm actually just pushing and pulling to the left and right, and I'm getting those to move around. See that? It's kind of nice. Uh, I know I want this at zero, 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 so I can also say, let's put it there, zero, zero, zero. And I hit the Enter key after each one of them. Uh, there are some things out here that aren't out here, sides and segments. Uh, how many pieces of geometry do I want to be made out of? If it's very few, it actually could be used for other stuff. That's the simplest torus I can make, which isn't much of a torus. Uh, let's put in three segments. That's a three segment torus, and let's put in four sides. That's a four sided torus, and again I can play with these and get them to make all sorts of interesting things. Um, Moto is what's known as a destructive modeler. And what that means is that when I drop this tool, I don't get these controls anymore. And I drop the tool, another keyboard equivalent, we're going to have to learn the Q key. I'm going to hit Q, and now I dropped it. And now that is what that is. It sits there. Uh, I can move it, though we should talk more about that later. Um, over here are various transforms to move things. Uh, this one should let me pull it this way and that way. Uh, this one should let me rotate it like that if I want. Now if I want to put something else in here, uh, I need a new container to put it in. The containers are called the meshes here. If I hit the N key, this is another keyboard equivalent, I get an empty mesh. And you see it shows me the old one with a wireframe, and this one has gray in it, meaning you know there's nothing in it. Let me put another primitive in there. I'm going to put a cone. I want my cone to start from the bottom here, so if I rotate around like this, I can then pull out on that surface. Uh, I'm going to hit Control-Z to undo that to show you. If I wanted to come out this way, I would turn until I saw this work plane. Ah, and then let's go back to that cone. And then I would drag it out like that. Control-Z. But I want it to be down here, so I'm going to drag it out here. Ah, we'll go around like that and uh, pick my cone and I'll go like this, and I'll push it up like that. Uh, I know I, I should always model stuff at zero, zero, zero. Um, I could easily do that by just entering the values here. Uh, that will make everything else work better. Uh, and then I can decide how much detail do I want this to have. We'll give it some more segments. Uh, why can't we see those segments? It's funny. Am I in a weird mode? Probably, but whatever. We could still sort of see part of that there. Uh, we'll go like that, and I'll make it taller. OK. Happy with it. Hit the Q button. And I want this to go through that. So let me select this, and then let me select those transforms again. Uh, this moves it. Uh, and if I click on them, see, I can move them like that. This rotates it. Uh, and let's go around and see where we are. Uh -huh, I have to move it. Um, I happen to know that um, translate, which is moving it, rotate, and scale are the WER keys. Q drops, W picks translate, E hits rotate, and uh, R hits scale. I'll show you what those mean momentarily. Plus, this is a really important thing. Every key has two modes. If I just hit a key quick, it locks into it. Like right now I'm in move mode so I can move this around and it won't put it down until I hit the Q button. But let's say I want to just quickly step into rotate mode. If I hold down the E, which I'm doing now, I can then rotate this how I want and when I release it, it goes back to its other mode. Now I want to see both these together. I select both of them there and we see both of these together. Okay, so, so you know, um, this is primitive modeling, and there are a lot of things that can be built this way. I've seen whole, uh, like, classic locomotives built out of nothing but these primitive shapes. Um, you know where these are really used commonly? Uh, Lord of the Rings, all those castles? All those castles are cones and cubes and donuts and, you know, uh, well, the other stuff they have up there, spheres and what have you. Um, every time I want to make a new one, I want to do it at zero, 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 and I want to make a new mesh, which is the N key. 
See, I can put in as many as I want. They're free. Uh, if I don't want one, I can get rid of it. These ones are empty because they're gray. The ones that are full, they're actually uh, got black text on them, right? And then other keyboard equivalents. Q quits my tool. W, if I, I'm going to select something. W translates it, and you see it lights up the translate thing over there. E rotates it. R scales it. What is scale? Scale is stretching it. And Q drops the tool again. If I want to do it on the other one, W translates it, translates it, E rotates it, and R scales it. And you could build whole worlds just with this. Um, one hand on the mouse, one hand on the keyboard. The keyboard equivalents you should know now are Alt to rotate. Alt, as about to do them all, Alt rotates. Alt and Shift pans around. The A key centers up your selection. Uh, the W key translates. The E key rotates. The R key scales and the Q key drops. So you can then go back to selecting by clicking on whatever you want, and then WER, back, rotate around. One hand on the keyboard, one hand on the mouse. You'll only get fast enough doing this if you use the keyboard. Um, I can do all those things I want to do by clicking over here, but it takes longer. So I want to be able to use those keyboard equivalents. Okay, I'm going to call that a stop right now. Uh, again, you have questions asked. Make sure you get the program downloaded. We're going to get uh, a long-term assignment tomorrow, a modeling assignment. Uh, so you want to get used to using the program with a mouse, with a keyboard, running on your system. Let me step out here.